All right, welcome back to another podcast with Mr. Hagen on this podcast. We're going to continue to talk about public goods, and we said on a previous video that a, a public good is a good that is non-rivalrous in consumption. We said a public good is a good that is non-excludable, and we said it's this concept of non-excludability that really is the big problem, the concept of non-excludability, because if, if, a, if a company cannot exclude non-payers, uh, then... We said they cannot earn a profit, which means that they won't produce the good. And so our problem is that the benefits outweigh the good, uh, benefits outweigh the cost, uh, but the good never uh, gets produced. So in in, in this uh, video, I want to do a, I want to look at an example of of, of this problem. So we're going to look at the example of. Uh, Example of fireworks. Uh, so fireworks, I'm going to argue here, are a public good. Fireworks are a public good because uh, they are generally non-rivalrous. If I watch the fireworks more, it doesn't really take away from you watching, you know, fireworks, your local town on the 4th of July, something like this, and you're sitting out in your lawn chair, or maybe at the local school or, or something, or park or something along those lines, and you, and, 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 you, and you watch the fireworks, and it really doesn't take away from uh, anybody else uh, watching the fireworks, not to a great extent anyway. And, and, and then they're not excludable, and that's really going to be the problem is not excludable. That is to say, once the company, uh, assuming the fireworks are put on by a private company, uh, once they do that, uh, anybody can free ride. Anybody can free ride. Anybody can just watch the fireworks. There's no way to exclude uh, non-payers from seeing the fireworks. And and so once they once they put on the fireworks, anybody can watch. And so how is the company going to make money? And and here's the problem. Let's let's say that we have 500 residents in this town. And, and let's say that they each value the fireworks at $10 each. Okay, that's not realistic, but let's just pretend that they all value uh, the fireworks at $10 for each person. That's how much each person values uh, watching the fireworks. And, sorry, and, and so let's say... That means that the total benefits for the town is uh, the townspeople would get $5,000 of happiness uh, from a company coming in and putting on the uh, fireworks show. And let's let's say that it cost $1,000 for the company to uh, put on the fireworks show. So clearly, the the benefits of the fireworks to the town, $5,000, is greater than the $1,000 that they have to pay uh, the firework company to, to put on on the show, so the benefits outweigh the cost, but the problem is, the inefficient, inefficient thing, is that it, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. They, they never uh, put on the show because, why? Well, because they can't charge anybody. They'd like to charge people $10 to come see the fireworks, but they can't, and they can't because people will just free ride. People will just free ride. They just they can see them without without paying. There's no way to, to charge really. And and so then the question is, what are we going to do about that? We have a public good problem uh, that is creating an inefficiency. Benefits outweigh the cost and it doesn't happen. And so uh, what do we do? We're going to uh, look to the government uh, to solve this inefficiency problem because you see the non-excludability of the fireworks, that's really the issue, is the non-excludability, which creates the free rider problem, okay? That creates the free rider problem. And so, uh, and so how could we fix this? Well, uh, there's, uh, the, the, the common way to fix this is that we would look to uh, the government. We would look to the government. And the government, they could either uh, produce the fireworks themselves or the government could, uh, maybe they could uh, fund the fireworks. So they're not, maybe not going to produce the fireworks, but the government will tax everybody, make you pay a tax. So the solution is that the government could tax everybody $2 and then just pay the business to put on the show. And if they taxed everybody $2, okay, we get $10 of happiness times 500 residents. That's $5,000 of total happiness. We tax everybody $2 a person times the 500 residents. And there we have the $1,000 to pay the company to put on the fireworks show. And so uh, now it, it, the, the government 
the government actually causes us to be actually causes a society to be more efficient by in, by imposing the tax and uh, putting on the fireworks show they've increased efficiency in society the fireworks show uh, will now go on now there might be some private solutions to this okay we, there might be some private solutions um, but but we probably really don't have the technology for a private company to solve the free rider problem yet with regard Regards to fireworks, one way that you could do that, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, uh, maybe you'd have to buy goggles, uh, special goggles. You have special fireworks, and and they shoot these fireworks up and in, uh, up into the sky, but they are not visible without the goggles. And then the company sells the goggles, and that's that's how they exclude non-payers. That that would that be one possibility. That's that's. I don't think currently that we have the technology in an effective way, uh, but maybe someday. Maybe someday that'll be the case. But at the moment, we look to the government to solve this problem. And, and the typical way that we look to the government to do it is the government either they, they, they actually provide the good or they're going to tax everybody and then pay a business to provide the good. Government is doing this. The, what, what are some other kind of common public goods? I'm just going to uh, mention some here very quickly. Uh, one, po one common public good is national defense. National defense is generally considered to be non-excludable and non-rivalrous. Uh, research is another area that is considered a public good or could be a public good. Technical knowledge is often thought to be excludable, but general knowledge, maybe a new math formula, something like that, is not easily excluded, uh, not easily excludable. You can't easily exclude non-payers. And, and so then we would argue then that national defense and research Research uh, could be provided by the government, or at least provided by uh, a paid for by government, and and we do this actually. The government, of course, provides national defense, and uh, in the United States, we have the National Institute of Health, the National Science Foundation, and they are funded by the government. Of course, we still have the big problem of uh, measurement and politics. That's still the case. That's still a problem. That makes it difficult to implement the uh, public good solution of having the government uh, provide the provide the product or or pay for the product. Finally, uh, another one to think about is fighting poverty. So, pi fighting poverty is also a public good. It tends to be it tends to be non-excludable. That is to say, there are free riders. I could, if we want to rely on private charities, I could just let other people give to the private charity, and I could free ride, and then uh, poverty would be uh, reduced where I live, and I get benefits from that. But everybody else had to pay for it. But of course, everybody else is going to free ride, and they're going to say, "I'll let I'll let Hagen give to to the charity, and I'll let someone else give the charity," and and therefore we will have too little uh, fighting of poverty, and so we will be below the social optimum. So again, to fix that. We're going to look to the government to fight poverty. So these are just some public goods that we look uh, for the government to come and and fix the the public good problem, the market failure, the inefficiency, where the benefits outweigh the costs, and it fails to happen. All right, this has been Mr. Hagen on another podcast. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you on the next Econ Podcast. <laughs>